Hello. How's everybody doing? Got my puppy here. Hey, Beauty by Christy. Hey, Heather. How are you guys doing? Everybody is back to work after the long weekend. <laughs> I've got my puppy here. She is the only one in the house today. She's keeping me company. Um, kids are back at school. Um, I think for some of you in the States, school started earlier. Thank you for the hearts. Hi, Rebecca. Thanks for joining today. Um, and so I'm not sure if you guys are in the spa right now working or if this is an admin day in your office or you're at home. But it feels like now that the kids are back to school, it's time to get to work on, you know, kind of getting serious back in your business. And I know, Rebecca, you really feel that way. You had a really great summer with your kids. Um, and I've noticed that you are like just, you know, you're going gangbusters. You, you definitely feel that, okay, it's fall. I'm ready to pay attention to my business again. So today I wanted to talk about, um, well, today is Tuesday and I wanted to make Tuesdays all about team. And even if you don't have a team, this is always really great information to tuck away. Um, or if you are part of a team and maybe you're not the spa owner, um, this is information for you too, because it totally applies. And if you're listening to me, then that means that you, um, you're probably a go-getter and you want to do better in your business or as an esthetician in within somebody else's business. So today, Team Tuesday, we are talking about the a lack of motivation factor. <laughs> How do you get your team to sell? Um, I know that you have probably have been to lots of product knowledge courses. You've been to uh, trade shows. You've, you've listened to other uh, business coaches and consultants talk about how to get your staff to sell. And you know, we're in an industry where you definitely need motivating Christy. <laughs> okay, we'll give you a shot in the arm of motivation. I find that this is a really difficult industry to motivate um, our staff because they went to school for their hands-on skill and they would much rather, um, you know, be in a treatment room giving a facial if, if it's a hair salon or nail salon, actually, you know, hands-on being with, with people. And selling the word sales can kind of seem like a dirty word to them. And uh, you can come up against some resistance where they're like, yeah, yeah. You know, they're kind of like the teenagers, right? Yeah, 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 mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, but they don't, still don't do it. How many of you guys have teenagers that do that? I have one that yeah, yeahs me all the time. And I used to have staff that would yeah, yeah me. And I hate being yeah, yeah. Now, one of the things that the, really, when you're talking about team and how to motivate them, um, you really have to dial it back be even before you give them skills and tools and statistics on why, you know, why their paycheck will be better. I think you have to back up the bus and talk about the, you know, the different kinds of motivation. And, you know, the one that really is really the only one that works long term is intrinsic motivation. And intrinsic motivation is different for everybody. My motivation, my internal motivation is going to be different than your motivation. It may be similar, but quite often it's different. And so like I may, um, what I value is maybe because I'm a mom, I'm also, you know, I, I work a lot. Um, maybe my motivation is um, going to be different than somebody that doesn't have kids and, um, you know, absolutely, you know, and, and isn't working a lot, maybe hands on their business anymore. So as far as your staff go, it's the same thing. They're going to have different factors that motivate them and to do whatever, whether it's selling product or upgrading services, finding that intrinsic motivation can be difficult because it is different for everybody. Not only is it different kind of personally for each person, it's different for generations. So, you know, the generation that's in the workforce right now, the millennials that are just entering these, you know, the salon and spa industry they have very different motivating factors than us Gen Xers. Um, definitely different than baby boomers. Um, what I've been hearing about Gen Xers, because I don't have any employees at the moment, what I'm hearing about Gen Xers and the frustration between Gen Xers and their employers who maybe are, uh, sorry, the staff that are millennials, the employers that are Gen Xers, is that 
Uh, the millennials value things like flexibility, you know, hugely valuable flexibility. Um, they value things like having their birthday off. Um, you know, for you and I, if you're of my generation, I'm 44. I would never in a million years even ask for my birthday off. But for somebody in their early 20s, that may be something really important to them. And so when you're looking at how to motivate your, your staff, part of what you need to do is put together a system of things, um, uh, a system of things that you can use. That's okay. No problem, Heather. You can catch this later. Um, you have to put together a system that you, uh, like a set of tools in your toolbox that you can pull out for different people. So <clears throat> if you have a team, say maybe half of them, uh, really want a day off on their birthday, you can weave that into how you want them. How do you want to, um, what's the word, uh, reward them when they do so. So it's just a little kind of, I kind of went off topic a bit about different um, generations and what they find intrinsically valuable, but that's what I'm getting at. Everybody has a different intrinsic motivation. And if you can find that intrinsic motivation and weave that into your uh, system for selling and your reward system for them, you're probably you're most likely to get better results than say if you just um you know had a system where you're rewarding straight up sales by giving them a commission okay so <clears throat> it's a bit like parenting <laughs> um if you are a parent you typically probably have some more sk better skills at handling a team than if you don't have kids um you know when your kids uh are younger you have to find their currency what do they find valuable and then you kind of have to use it against them in order to get the behavior that they want. Or you, you don't use it against them. You know what I mean? Like you, you're, you're trying to get them motivated by using what their currency is at the, at the time. Same thing goes for staff. You have to know what their currency is in order to reward them. Otherwise, there's nothing in it for them. Okay. The other point I wanted to um, make about this, about motivation, there's two sides of it. <clears throat> You know, as an owner, we think that it's, you know, it's kind of, th they need to be motivated. My staff need to be motivated. But a big part of this is our leadership. And if we are compromising on our leadership, um, then, hmm, you know, what do you expect? Uh, one of my, my favorite sayings from my dad was, shit rolls downhill. <laughs> and... Um, you know, I saw that glaringly obvious when I had a team, when I wasn't stepping up to the leadership play and I was dropping the ball. Like I wasn't, I didn't have a training program for them. I didn't have a sales training program for them of my own. I, didn't, I wasn't giving them enough tools for them to, um, to be selling successfully. So that was on me. I had to step up my leadership and that meant I needed to write out customer service scripts because not everybody knows how to say what you want them to say. That means I had to step up in my training with them and my coaching with them. Um, did you know that you have to coach your staff? Yeah, you do. Um, and unfortunately, a, a big part of this industry tends to want to like hire staff, especially if they come with a clientele, and chuck them into the, onto the floor to do services. And then we wonder why we're having problems with them um, to keep them motivated. It's because we haven't spent enough time with them understanding them, uh, knowing what their intrinsic motivation is, and we haven't spent enough time um, and thought in how our leadership is affecting how we're motivating them. So that is my little um, shot in the arm, pep talk motivation for encouraging your staff to be able to sell more. And I've really just glossed over this topic um, and we can totally dive deep in this, deep, 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 especially when it comes to what kind of intrinsic motivation um, uh, and, and kind of what you need to be doing as a leader. But this gives you a little bit of an idea of the two sides of motivation. It's not just that they're being a pain in the butt and not selling. There's something missing. And when your team isn't selling, when your retail sales are low, when your... Um, uh, when your upgrades are, are not happening, whether it's upgrading them when they're booking the appointment or trying to upgrade them because you have a little bit of free time after the client and you can, um, you have the time to put another service in, 
you need to have the systems in place so that your staff know what to say, how to say it, and when to say it when it's appropriate. Okay. All right. So I will be on Periscope tomorrow at noon again. I like doing it a little bit later. It just has um, more people seeing it when I like that. Um, and so we'll do another lunch and learn. And it's guess it's lunchtime for me here in uh, BC. I'm from Victoria, BC. And for those of you that don't know me, um, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Kirsten Foss. I own Refreshed Businesses Coaching and Consulting, and I help salon and spa owners um, find the leaks of their profits and plug them and create kick-ass strategy for them to follow and grow their business. Anyways, thanks, gang. Uh, have a great day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow at noon. Bye.